Howdy, all aboard for episode 5 of The Last Caboose. In the previous episode, I was having trouble with my plank and tool freight line, the line that we're riding right now. I've uh, spent some time and I've worked out the issues. Um, took me a little bit to figure out what was going on. Um, as I pull up the UI here, you'll see that I took quite some time and I've made some extra money along the way, which is just going to help us on our push westward, which is our main goal today. But why don't we get right into it today and uh, we'll fix what's going on with this line. So if we are here and we go and we look at this line, if I go to manage line, I currently have it to set uh, to uh, pick up planks in Cochrane siding and drop off nothing. And that's where I was missing it. I need to be able to unload the tools there and if I go into the Ogden Yards line, I will want it to unload tools, and this is important, or load tools and unload planks. So that should fix all the issues with this line and get it back to making maximum profit. Um, I also noticed when I was doing testing that uh, my line rate was a little bit low, and so if we, or a little bit high, so if we bring this up and I look at my plank uh, plank freight, I have a line rate of 75. Uh, it gets a little confusing because I am bringing uh, tools back, but uh, I have discovered through trial and error that it is about one vehicle too, uh, or one wagon too big. So I'm going to just remove that one wagon and uh, let's see if that uh, helps us bet in. <clears throat> now, on the last episode, we uh, set up our passenger service uh, from Calgary to Cochrane, and uh, I think today let's uh, let's move westward, and uh, I think let's just jump right on into it. So uh, let's bring up some construction here. Um, we know that we're making a good amount of money. I've tested that out. I've let the game run for about four or five um, game years or time years, uh, but uh, obviously the date's paused, so we haven't lost anywhere in terms of our ability. Now, the uh, the line here coming out of Cochrane does cross the, uh, the Bow River one more time here, and I think... Uh, I think this is what we want to do. We want to kind of come out a little bit on an angle, but not too much. And maybe continue on, but let's make that flat. And we're going to turn in again. We'll fix a lot of these speeds here as time goes on. But what I want to do is get this as close to the asset water as possible to build a little bit of a footing. Turn my zero height bridge on. Build it straight across. And there we go. Turn my zero height bridge off. And up we go. There we go. Now, on this side of the river, it uh, it will bend in. Let's uh, actually take that back just a little bit because it does follow the river here for a little bit. And uh, I'd like uh, to like I would like to mirror that um, in our gameplay. So here we go. We're just going to be coming up following the terrain of, uh, of the river valley and um, yeah, we'll create a little bit of an embankment there that wouldn't have been unreasonable and then we come along right along these side slopes here I think if we get right down here we can see maybe pulling it to there making it flat yeah I think I like that and then I think we just follow the terrain along 
trying to keep it as nippy as possible, but uh, obviously we are going to uh, let's just go back and follow some of the terrain. Uh, by the looks of it here, we're going to just cut it back just a bit. You know what? Let's pull up our UI or our uh, terrain. This will make things a little bit easier. We're pretty much following that solid brown line. And uh, we'll just come along here. Now we're going to be working our way towards the construction. Uh, the, um, yeah, the construction materials plant and the the uh, force in the Kananaskis. So I think we're going to create two new freight uh, sidings today and um, I think that will and then we'll probably get oh see I've done it again. See this is what happens if you get a little too click happy is now I've deleted that water asset. I'll go ahead off screen and add that water asset. Um, what I'm looking to do here is just kind of get a little bit higher up on uh, the valley here. Now, this is an interesting um, point in um, in the, the the map, and I'll uh, I'll show you why. We take that layer off right here. <clears throat> here's the Ghost River coming out uh, from the Rocky Mountains, and right in here. They've built the dam right here in modern times. Um, I'll have to go check what uh, year that dam was built. But now there's a giant reservoir right all the way up here to about where you can start to see the imprint of the river starting again. So in here, we've kind of lost definition um, on the real height data from the Canadian government of where the river flowed in 1883. Uh, so we're just going to have to play some guessing games. Um, obviously, it's going to be in this valley where the reservoir is sitting, and it's going to follow roughly that course, but the actual little twists and turns that it took, uh, we've lost those definitions, and um, no amount of map searching that I've done here, uh, I can bring up an accurate topo topographical map from 1883, um, I can just bring up general um, general uh, guidance of where that river went, but I cannot, for the life of me, find something that actually will um, give us historical context of where the river flowed. So I do know that if you look on uh, the maps of today, that the railroad follows very closely to the edge of the reservoir. So I imagine that at the time that they flooded the reservoir, they did not want to move the uh, the rail line too drastically. So uh, I'm sure that they uh, <coughs> moved it as minimally as possible if uh, they moved it at all. So maybe we are following the original rail line. Um, answers on that, if anyone knows. Who knows? Now we're coming into this big open untreed land. Now if you've ever had the opportunity to drive from uh, Calgary to Banff to go skiing or uh, on a vacation in Banff or something like that, you'll come over a, a hill back here, Scotts Lake Hill. And this interesting enough right now is the highest point on the Trans-Canada Highway. You would think um, it would be in the Rocky Mountains, but it is actually outside in the foothills of Alberta where the highest point you'll find on the Trans-Canada Highway which is interestingly enough why the Gap and the Bow Valley was chosen is because it was quite a low pass over the eastern slopes of the Rockies so that is uh, that is a neat matter of interest and uh, as we move into this this here this land here is now um, an Indian or a First Nations reservation um, for the Morley, um, Morley Indians, and they, uh, <coughs> they would have been part of Treaty 7. Now, in 1870, the, uh, Canadian government acquired Rupert's Land from the Hudson's Bay Company, and, uh, Rupert's Land was a vast tract of land that stretched for, stretches from pretty much present-day Manitoba all the way to the, uh, the Rocky Mountains. 
and it was a very, very lucrative fur trading land for the Hudson's Bay. But uh, after Confederation, Canada, of course, had eyes on uh, gaining as much land as possible, and the Hudson's Bay uh, needed to shed itself of uh, a whole bunch of interests, and there were many other political reasons um, that um, they would have done this. So they, uh, they ended up um, ceding all rights to it and giving it to the Canadian government. And uh, when the railroad was chosen to go through the southern parts of, uh, of Canada, one of the larger obstacles uh, was the crossing of Alberta, and it was the First Nations of the Blackfoot that uh, provided or proved an obstacle for them. And the First Nations, the Blackfoot First Nation, was a proud warrior nation, and they had incredible power uh, on the plains. And the British government at the time and, the, and so forth, the Canadian government, didn't have the means to wage a war uh, against them, and nor were they interested in creating a war, uh, much like the Americans did uh, down in the south in their uh, great Indian wars of the uh, post-Civil uh, War era. So instead of that, they decided to treat with the natives, and uh, in doing that, they essentially, in what history now calls, robbed the natives of their land uh, in exchange for mere morsels and mere lip service. Uh, really wasn't the greatest time in the Canadian history, and uh, m much of that evidence is still evident today. So in 1870, <coughs> Father Lacombe, or in 1870, yeah, it's 1870, Father Lacombe came to Alberta and set up a mission in St. Albert. Uh, now, it wasn't St. Albert at the time, um, but uh, he set up a mission there, and he gained the favor and the trust of uh, one of the chiefs of the Blackfoot, Chief Crowfoot. And uh, when uh, Father Lacombe learned of the railway road crossing, uh, crossing Canada, he convinced um, Chief Crowfoot that it was inevitable that the railroad was going to cross um, across the country, and instead of fighting it, it would probably be beneficial to benefit uh, from it. So they decided, or he decided, Chief Crowfoot decided, instead of uh, fighting the, the railroad, he would um, allow passage of the railroad in exchange for a lifelong pass on uh, on the CPR, uh, which I think is just an amazing, uh, <laughs> amazing piece. Uh, you gave up so much freedom for something so temporary. Uh, I would have been novel at the time, I'm sure, uh, but certainly, probably viewed in the eyes of history now, maybe not the greatest of decisions for him. So, as we uh, we come further to the west here. We are um, just going to cross over, and I think this is where the river is. Um, again, I might tweak this line a little bit. You can see I am making a bit of an embankment here, so uh, I feel like the river would be there. I probably will tweak this, um, this bridge a bit in the future, uh, but in the interest of the game right now. I think we're going to come through here and we're going to start making our way to Gap and Ekshaw. And Ekshaw is where we've got our um, construction materials plant. And uh, I think it's time to turn the, um, the terrain, the topographical map back on and start following the topography of the land now we can make a nice embankment there and again bend it it would be nice to get this flat and then come around without cutting too drastically into the land yeah, see that's cutting that mountain far too much I think maybe our best bet is just to kind of straighten out there and maybe if I extend the track a little bit straighter, we can, yeah, we can get the embankment that we're so looking for. And 
if we can now come around and hug right alongside of this road that's exactly what I'm looking to do that's right around here the river everything that we're coming through the gap uh, the entrance of the the Rockies here so now it's um, we're tight for space the valley will widen out but right here I think what we want to do is follow this as much as possible and then I think we shall create ourselves a siding here okay, so we went that way so the check marks down at the other end oh there we go now I think we can actually come in and create ourselves a siding around here <clears throat> I think this is gonna be in the first case, I'm actually going to use a mod that I've installed, um, and it is going to be a free station mod, and I'm going to do that just because of the limited um, space. Now, the free station mod allows us to build um, sidings on a curved piece of track, such as this. And so, uh, how we use this is let's uh, turn off our contour lines. Let's get this siding built here. And uh, we come in and we can go, and if you can look, we've got all of these. We've got 20 meter cargo platforms, five meter cargo platforms, 10 meter cargo platforms. I'm gonna use the 10 meter and see how wide they are. That seems excessively large to me. Um, I think it's more realistic than a five meter for construction platform so I think that's what we'll do is we'll just use one of these and we're gonna come in pretty close to that switch and we're gonna curve it all the way along to the end of here and now you can see that we have a curved platform which is something that the game has been lacking for since the beginning of the game so we grab these, we can go for the platform and markers. It doesn't matter if you do the platform first or the track first, but if we encompass this whole platform all the way to the end, and then the track, the track markers here. And uh, the only danger of this is we have no idea um, how long the, um, the platform really is. So we have to just keep an eye on our consist or train consist so it's able to turn around and now as you can see i have created a new station and we're going to call this station extra extra siding excellent and now here we don't have access to too much um too many buildings so it is unfortunate but uh it is what it is we do have access to some cargo stations and some buildings uh, that building uh, i think that that is sufficient there and now let's see if we can get some street access to it. So if we move on over, we find our building here in the woods. We build a nice little road to it. Now these woods are interesting. Is uh, when the railway um, moved west through uh, all of the valleys of the Canadian Rockies and the BC Rockies, the Purcells, the Selkirks, um, they found encountered nothing but gorgeous old old growth forests. And within the first five years, they chopped all of them down. Uh, and also as part of construction, fire breaks uh, for the railroad. So within five or six years, this entire valley would have been clear cut from one side to the other and it created multiple problems with erosion and soil issues so it really was um, quite the travesty for uh, for environmentalism but at the time 
they didn't really uh, know what environmentalism was. So I think we're going to do the same thing out here. Now this seems an odd place for a siding, um, but you'll, uh, you'll understand why I'm doing it. Now, if we come down and we can follow the course of what the Kananaskis River will, will have taken. So it's going to come out and it's going to come out this gap and then it makes an abrupt turn back to the west and comes down and into the Bow Valley here. So I think right after the bridge, we'll, we should, or right before the bridge, as one would look at it, we'll make another siding. And we'll make this siding, oh, I use the right thing. Um, yeah, I think the river's coming in about there. Yeah, I think we'll make this siding fairly quick and fairly long because our, our time between trains is going to be quite long here and we have nothing but room out here so there we go we've got a new siding in and let's create another platform there we go and using the same markers like I'll show you here it matters not which way you go and it matters not which ones you place first or last bada bing bada boom and we're gonna call this can ask is siding can and ask yes there we go and now we have two new places that we can carry cargo from. Well, almost. So let us uh, get in that old tin cargo line here and we'll create a road to here. And let's get a road up to that logging camp. I think our best way forward is to follow this piece of topography right here which is where the river is going to be sitting and if we bring that in like that nice and straight nice and flat and then we'll get our curve road tool on and let's bring it around and up into the mountains and we'll have to get some uh, horses on here. I think what we're going to do is uh, that looks like the river will take up most of that part of the valley. So we'll come around that knoll. We'll take the easiest route up. And yeah, you can even see that we're going down here, which is fabulous. Mountain roads, they do nothing but go up and down and around. And uh, I've biked a lot on uh, this road. It, it's Highway 40 now in Kananaskis, and it is uh, it is very beautiful, and it is very very uh, difficult to bike. Uh, there's a pass at the end of it, North Overpass, and it is uh, one of the best rides. They close it seasonally for uh, game movement, and. Uh, I feel it's one of the best rides in the uh, the Canadian Rockies, best road bike ride. So what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to make a tunnel right through there. It's going to be our first and probably only tunnel on this map. So uh, in the 1800s, this road would have never existed. This is simply taking some artistic license. Uh, it does exist now. But uh, like I said, back then, this valley was largely unexplored by uh, European settlers. Um, they were attempting to push west, and uh, the development followed them instead of the development being there prior to, as uh, would indicate that our logging mine or our logging mills and our forests were here prior to them. It, uh, it's not the case. In reality, everything followed the European settlers. Prior to that, the uh, 
First Nations people subsisted uh, off the land in a very peaceful and uh, very um, friendly manner to, as they called the Mother Earth. So the arrival of the uh, European settlers was distressing to them um, as they did not hold the same values as uh, the local indigenous people. Now, I think because the river is right beside this um, logging camp, I think we're going to place our truck stop in and around the back just to uh, set it out of the way, which means I think we can just have a general turnaround. We'll do um, one, one side. Let's see, can we turn this around? We'll get that in there, make it maximum length, and we'll make it even longer here in a minute. Does it connect? It does. Let's configure this, and we'll add some bay onto it. There we go. Cut it all the way back, and I think on this side, just to add some scenery and some life, actually what would make more sense is if we put the um, the depot down here by the siding and um, we kind of made it part of the uh, the siding I think it would have made sense in the time that they would have carried their uh, carriages or put them on uh, flat cars and uh, and taken them out there if this were a real line, so I think if we put that depot there, that would be excellent. And um, let's set up a new line, and we're gonna go from here, the Camor Exchange, to Canaska Siding, and that's going to be the incorrect one because what have you forgotten to do? You've forgotten to put a dead drop in or a drop. So there we go. Let's grab that line again. Add station after that, Walnut Street. Let's call that something else. Let's call this Kandaskis. And let's call this instead of Camor Siding or Camor Exchange. We're going to call this Kananaskis. Forest. There we go. And now, on that new line, let's give it a nice log color. We are going to just add Let's call this can and ass, yes, log haulage. And I believe just to get this going so we don't uh, waste too, too much money, we're just going to buy one and we're going to throw it on can ask this log haulage. And now I think what we can do is we're going to set up. Now we've got lots and lots of money in the bank right now, so I think what we do is we get a new line and we go from here to Cochrane. And now we're going to start modifying a few things. Uh, we're going to start busying everything up. And as you can see, we are interfering with their trains. Oh, that's probably why. So let us complete this wrong thing there we go let us complete this line here uh, let's go all the way up to but not quite to the bridge there we go and now let's see what that's done to, done to the line it's still sharing with um, with the platform here, so let's force its hand by putting a waypoint in. Uh, we'll have to do 
track waypoint and we'll put that waypoint right here and uh, let's go to this after can ask is signings we want you to go via this waypoint and we have no crossover to get over to there so I think immediately after this instead of doing a diamond I think immediately after we have plenty of room we can just oh it won't like it oh we'll wait for a small train to go by there we go and we'll make that quite nippy as uh, it's still going into the station and then let's see perfect now it's going to go into the sidings over here and drop off for it's going to drop off logs into our lumber mill and let's uh, color this brown and we will call it can and this log freight and now this is going to cause an entire trickle down or not even a trickle down effect I, I'm going to call it an entire um, cascade effect uh, we're going to try and upgrade our one industry uh, but we're also going to change up all of our consists so let's get our black locomotive or black uh, consolidation class and let's get us a whole bunch of flat cars with side stakes on it I think close to 100 should do the trick it's gonna cost us three million dollars you bet set that on can ask us log and uh, let's see if they come out of the depot look at that so I think for the end of today we're just gonna head on up uh, now through the Bill Valley we'll get a few more uh, carts onto that log haulage so we can start making it productive um, let's see I think duplicating vehicles here is gonna be very difficult so why don't I just go into the thing into the depot and we're gonna buy 35 new vehicles that's going to cost 1.4 million dollars. Now you'll see that our money has changed. Um, I went in to go and rebuild the uh, Cochrane sidings. I think I'll save that for another episode. Uh, but I ended up deleting a whole bunch of water assets and uh, it became very troublesome to add them back in. So I had to reload the game and, uh, and actually um, rebuild up to this point so I think I got everything in um, pretty much the way we put it in in the episode um, I did add a few extra bridges here and there I'll take you on a tour of it at some point um, but yeah looks like we're gonna have to just wait for some money to come in to add some more carts so let's uh, let's do this the slow way and we'll just manage the vehicle um, can ask us log haulage we not have any vehicles on this? Manage vehicles. Oh, we don't have any. Well, I think we're going to need to set this guy. Oh, it's not even set to a line. Oh, well, let's put him onto that one. Let's hop onto this. Manage vehicles. We'll clone. Yep. And we'll clone them all. And let's add two more, two more, two more. Let's just go until we run out of money, I think. And then I think we'll have a nice uh, caboose ride. Oh, speaking of caboose, I think we need to go and find our train vehicle. I believe it's train number three. And we're going to need to manage this vehicle. Uh, we're going to have to add a caboose on. There we 
we go. And now let's go find out where he is. Oh boy. And let's see. Yeah, we're just uh, coming up the Bow Valley now. And uh, I think I'll leave you with the ride uh, west of Cochrane here. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And I hope you guys have a great afternoon, morning, night, whatever it is for you. Take care.